Erika Shinohara is a boring, pathetic, and lifeless high school girl. She wanted to join the gang of cool girls as she was not popular, nor did she have any true friends. In order to earn the respect of her friends, she chose the most convenient romantic anim troupe where she lies about her romantic life. She wanted to look cool in front of her so-called friends which made her lie about her non-existent romantic life. But when they asked to see a picture of her, she got herself into deep shit. So by the blessings of romantic comedy and I am gods, she showed them the photo she had snapped of a random stranger, but the random guy had a much more prominent reputation in the school rather than our plain Jane Wolf Girl heroine. When her friends saw the guy's photo, they instantly recognized him as the most popular, handsome, and kind-hearted guy in the school, Hugh Hisada. Trapped in her own web of lies and desperately trying to avoid humiliation, she informed Kyuya about her situation, hoping he would jump in on her lies and pretend to be her lovey-dovey boyfriend. But Kyuya Sada did not turn out to be the supreme angel that people know him as. He is in reality a mean-spirited sadist who forces Erika to be his dog in exchange for keeping her secret. Begrudgingly accepting his deal, Erika starts to see the glimpses of the real Kyuya under his multiple layers of outer personalities. Soon she starts to fall in love with his sadistic personality. But she also has her concerns about if Kyuya doesn't feel the same way about her. This could be the journey of Kyuya making an honest woman out of Erika or Erika being trapped into the saddest doggy play of Kyuya. Welcome in the Sadamasaka's journey of the century. A handsome boy with blonde hair and red eyes was walking on the street with his friends after bunking classes. Everybody was watching the handsome guy and suddenly out of the corner a girl who was our protagonist Erika Shinohara clicked a picture of the handsome guy. Pretty sure that's illegal. But it doesn't matter to the Anim gods since they need to make money out of Otakus. It is Erika's first day in high school. She was going to school with her old friend Sana. Erika was tense about making friends and she practiced smiling to make sure she can make friends. Sana told her to be calm and it won't matter if she doesn't make friends since being comfortable is the most important thing. But this was a big issue in the eyes of Erika because these three years of high school will determine if she will be in heaven or hell without any friends. She even considers dying a better option than remaining friendless. Suddenly, as if to put her brain in the right place, a ball came from the playground and hit her face. She got angry and shouted at the kids, but after seeing that some girls from her high school were also there, she calmed herself and behaved softly. But that didn't work because she accidentally broke the window of the school building while trying to kick the ball. On her way to class, Santa told her to be true to her own self and warned about her glorified habit of lying that would soon get her into trouble. Erica's spirit was quite low due to the accident, but Santa cheered her up to smile and make friends. Santa was doing well in her new class with girls who were talking to her. While talking, the girls saw a handsome boy walking by them and sat on the table in the front. Meanwhile, Erica was not doing so great as everybody was already in a group. She saw a girl sitting next to him named Marin and her friend Tezuka. They both were crazy stylish and kept talking about their boyfriends. She couldn't reduce the distance they had so in order to mingle with them. She started talking like she was an expert in dating and gave them advice to be freaky with their boyfriends. Soon she became a part of the group by lying that she also has a boyfriend with whom she is in a pretty intense relationship with. Whenever the girls talked about their boyfriends, Erica also boasted about her boyfriend. She said that she got a call from her boyfriend to her friends and went to the bathroom. Turns out it was Santa who called her every day in order to pretend that she indeed had a boyfriend. She told her to stop lying and that she shouldn't force herself to be friends with them. But Erica said that they will oust her from the group if they knew she didn't have a boyfriend. The whole class were already in groups so she would have no place to go. In order to save her reputation, she needed to lie. Marin and Tezuka also came into the bathroom and talked about how Erika did not ever show his boyfriend's photo to them, nor did she let them meet him. They suspected that Erika was lying and even set those phone calls up every day. Erika was now in huge trouble as she didn't have a photo to show to them to prove that she indeed have a boyfriend. That's when she saw the handsome blonde man and takes a photo of him. But she took the photo standing right in front of him and before the boy could say something, she distracted him by lying and ran away. Next day, she showed the photo to her friends, who were shocked to see such a handsome man. But the guy seemed very familiar to them as if they had seen him before. At lunchtime, Erica bumped into a guy, who turned out to be none other than the handsome guy she had taken a picture of. But they didn't seem to recognize each other right then. Erica went to sit with her friends in the cafeteria. Tezuka suddenly shouted and said that her boyfriend was the class 8 prince charming Sada Kyuya. Right at that moment, Kyuya was walking behind them and Erika took his hands and ran like their life depended on it. She told him about the whole situation and he agreed to help him. She kept thinking what a kind-hearted person he was but her dreams shattered when he said that he would not do it for free and she had to be his dog. He told her to spin around three times and bark. She didn't understand what he was trying to play and refused to do so. 
Kyuya threatened to reveal her secret, and this worked like a charm on her because the next moment she spun and barked like a dog. Kyuya laughed and went away after watching her dumbness. At class, Erika was scared thinking what other things he would make her do or if he would use her to do indecent things. Her thoughts didn't last long because Kyuya was waiting outside her class and called her to come. He told her that dogs have to come to their master immediately after being called for. They exchanged their data in the way and Erika asked if he would do some strange with her as if making you a dog was a common thing. He assured her that he didn't lack money or girls for that. He started telling her how he liked dogs and the dogs waited for their master forever, listening to their orders. He liked the eager eyes of the dog which made his sadistic personality excited. He told her to get attached to him as soon as possible and patted her. He started to order her around to run his errands for him. Her friends made a plan to play a prank on them. Erika was at the cafeteria with Kyuya who had ordered her to buy him a drink and sit down with him. Marin and Tezuka came in to sit with them. Kyuya played his part as her pretend boyfriend and introduced himself. The girls started to talk loudly about Kyuya being into bondage play and getting excited by tying girls up. Erika tried to say something but Kyuya stopped her and accepted that he liked it so what? He took Erika by hands and got out of the cafeteria after apologizing to everyone. Erika was shocked to see how he protected her and even let her call him by his name. Kyuya said that now she was in debt of him making her his long-time wolf girl slave. It was slave. It was raining after school. Erika and her friends were standing inside the building while Tezuka was boasting about his boyfriend who was sending a car to escort him. She kept telling him how good it was to have an older boyfriend. She told them that they could get a ride in her boyfriend's car. But Kyuya made his entry with an umbrella and said that taking Erika home was his job. They went away together which made them jealous and Marin also called his boyfriend to come escort her with an umbrella. But this charade of theirs was only for people's eyes because after getting out of the school parameter, it was Erika who had to bear the umbrella and serve Kyuya. He behaved as her master as usual and made her understand clearly that if she doesn't listen to him, he will not pretend to be her boyfriend, leaving her without one. Erika told Santa everything about from that start from his pretend kindness to his sadistic personality. Santa told her that she also had a mesoka streak in her otherwise she wouldn't be on board with his plans. Erika said that she just had to lie and behave like an adult. In the end, she is just using him. Santa could understand that she was just telling all of this to console herself. She advised her to have a real boyfriend. Erica said that she had never fallen for a man. She had crushes on men, but never thought about kissing them or being lovey-dovey with them. Santa said that she should look at men with romantic intentions in her mind. Maybe the person she is searching for is closer to her than she thinks. She started looking at boys at school, but nobody impressed her. Tezuka told her that some girls were waiting to talk to her. Turns out they were the fangirl of Kyuya who had came out to confront her. They told her that Kyuya was the idol of the school. She was only allowed to see and not touch him. But Erika was no fan of Kyuya, so she replied that she didn't care. Her reply did not impress them, and they attacked her. She got scared and said she thought the rules were only for people who didn't have the courage to confess her feelings. They told her to give Kyuya back to everyone and break up with him. Erika, for obvious reasons, couldn't do so. A guy came to her rescue and told the girls to leave her be. They went away and the guy asked Erica if she was okay. Erica replied that she was fine and introduced herself. The guy said that his name was Kimura and they were from the same grade. He told her to talk informally and after a brief conversation with him, she started to see him in a different light. At lunch, she kept thinking about him and thought if he was popular with girls or not as he seemed handsome. She thought that Kyuya was also popular with girls. She asked him how many girls he dated before her. He said that he didn't date anyone. This piqued her interest as he had told him that he did not lack girls. He cleared her confusion saying that he did not lack girls physically but he didn't chase romance because he didn't feel the need to. Erica thought what could have made him so cold towards love. Erica was at her class when she heard her friends talking about their boyfriends and how much they loved them. Hearing all this, she also wanted love and just by coincidence, she saw Kimura standing outside her class. She went to him and asked if he wanted to give someone a message. He said that he came to check on her if the girls from before were bullying her again. He feared if the interaction from before made new problems for her. She said that she was fine and the girls did not bully her again. Kimura became happy hearing that and went away saying goodbye. She was getting home with Kyuya and a car drenched her on the way because Kyuya was using her as a shield. He stickered at her clumsiness but after some time a kid hit him on the legs with a stick which made him fall. Erika laughed at him and he got angry. He threw the stick far away and told her to bring it back. Poor Erika brought back the stick and heard his harsh criticism on her training. Next day, Erica was bringing back the trash can when she fell with the trash can on top of her. Suddenly, balls from many directions came and hit her. She thought of it as her bad luck, but it was actually a silent sort of bullying. Kimura came to help her. He took her to the infirmary to treat her injured knee. 
Tezuka and Marin saw all of that and told Huya that Erika was with another guy in the infirmary and cheating on him. Kimura treated Erika and asked if she was free on Sunday to go out with him. Erika was happy to hear that. They both exchanged emails and made plans for Sunday. Huya entered the infirmary and took Erika away with him. He asked for her phone and broke it into two pieces. He told her to stop wagging her tail around other men and to behave good with her Esther only. Erika couldn't say anything to his face as she was still bound to their contract, but she knew that after getting a real boyfriend she will get free from him. She went on an outing with Kimura on Sunday and after spending some quality time with him, she thought that maybe he could be the one for her. Kimura bought her a drink and said that he knows that Kyuya was her boyfriend and it was wrong for him to ask her out. Erika hurriedly explained that Kyuya was only pretend to be her boyfriend for a certain reason. This made Kimura shed his fake mask and he said that he didn't have any interest in her who is actually not Kyuya's girlfriend. Long time ago, he had stolen one of his girlfriends so he just wanted to steal his girl and make him feel the same. Kyuya was sitting in the same area and said that he knew Kimura was shady. He told him that he didn't stole his girl, rather the girl came to him on her own. Erika asked Kimura if all this while well, what he did or said all was a lie, he said that it was Erika's fault to fall for it, as she was desperate for a man. Otherwise, he wouldn't show a hint of interest in a cheap girl like her. Kyuya punched Kimura and said that even though they did not date, but she still belonged to him. And if anybody hurted her, he would be pissed at them. He took Erika and went away. He asked Kyuya if he knew about Kimura's plan all along. He said he knew it and he knew about her lies too. He told her not to involve him in such shenanigans again or he'd throw her from the window. Erika said that she had to experience her first love like this. Kyuya afflicted her and said not to get all tizzy about love and be self-delusional. Erika, after being verbally abused by Kyuya, felt her heart flickering for him but it soon went away after he called her Pachi and trash talked about her dog training. It was the time of summer vacation and Erika had nothing else to do but cry over her friends having fun with their boyfriend on the beaches. Summer vacation was on the verge of ending and Erika couldn't do anything fun except hanging out with Santa. Santa asked if Kyuya had called her during the summer vacation, but he hadn't called her for even once. Erika had also thought that he would call her to serve him or fetch things for him, but he completely ignored her. Santa asked her if she was pouting because he has abandoned her. Perhaps she had fallen in love with him. Erika replied that she didn't like him nor she loves him. It was just a moment of kindness that he showed but it was her hallucination as he was a twisted guy to the core. Santa said maybe Kyuya had fallen for her. She said that Kyuya didn't feel anything about loving anyone. Santa told her that human feelings change after some time and her own feelings towards him could also change. Santa said that nowadays she keeps thinking about Kyuya. Maybe Kyuya also thinks about her like she does. Summer vacation came to an end and it was already the second term. Tezuka had bought souvenirs for Marin and Erika along with Kyuya. Erika didn't see Kyuya outside her class today, so she went to his class. Santa told him that he was sick with a cold and asked her to deliver some things to his place as she was a bit busy. Erika was a bit surprised to know that the mighty Kyuya was sick, but at the end of the day he can't beat a virus. She took the stuff and went to Kyuya's house. At first she didn't know how to greet his family, but she mustered up her courage and finally rang the doorbell. Thankfully Kyuya answered the door. He asked what she was doing here. She said that she had materials from his class and souvenir that her friend brought. He took it but got dizzy on his way. Erika took him to his bed and asked if he needs anything. He told her that he didn't need anything from her and asked her to go. She asked if there was someone from her family at home. But he said that his father works late and they didn't live with his mother. She fell silent at hearing that but Kyuya said it was normal for him and not to feel pity for him. Erika left and the next day she took the things from Sana and went to his house. She had bought medicine for him and asked if he needed anything. He said that he didn't need anything nor did he want to be in a debt of her. She sat him down on bed and told him to leave his pride and just be doted on while he is sick. She asked him to down his guard around her as she was his dog. After some extreme degradation of Erika done by Erika herself, he agreed and asked for some fruits. Erika cooked food and cutted fruits for him. She also fed him Kyuya fell asleep shortly after that and saw a dream from his childhood. After he opened his eyes, he saw Erika was still there with him. He asked why was she doing all these and what she wanted from him. Erika said she didn't want anything from him, rather she wanted to do it. After giving him water, she left and told him to call if he needed anything or felt lonely. Kyuya was absent the next day too and Erika ran to his home determined to cure his virus. She saw him outside his house and rushed him on. Turns out his fever was gone and now he was much better. Kyuya thanked her which surprised Erika. She thought that Kyuya felt annoyed all this time because she kept pushing into his life. Kyuya said he indeed felt annoyed because such girls were always hankering after him and tried to show of their good heart to him. But she didn't have any ulterior motives behind her kindness, that's why he thanked her. 
She went to check his temperature by hand and Kuya held her hands and told her to stop doing such embarrassing things. She left in a hurry from his house with a loudly beating heart. Next day, Kuya came to her but Erika couldn't seem to meet his eyes. He asked if she caught his cold but she said she was fine and told him not to worry. He said that he wasn't worried as it was a dog's job to risk its life for its master. Sana asked Erika if she had actually fallen in love with Kuya. She said that she has developed feelings for him but it was embarrassing as she had said many bad things about him. Sana assured her saying it doesn't matter because we can't decide who we fall for. She told her to tell him about her feelings. Erika didn't know how to approach him with her feelings as they were on their way to home. Suddenly a dog came and clinged to Kuya. He smiled softly at the dog and petted him. Erika was enamored with his prince smile. She told him to adopt a dog if he liked dogs so much but he said he had a dog previously which died so he doesn't want to have a new one in fear of losing it too. He told her now that he has a big dog like her. He doesn't need another. Erika kept thinking about how to tell him about her feelings and she got just the way to do it. She took some apple pear her aunt had sent to give to Kuya. She decided to tell him her feelings today but the door opened and a girl came out of his house. Kuya said that the girl had picked him up. Erika told him not to bounce around girls anymore. But Kuya said she didn't have any authority to tell him what to do as she was not his girlfriend. He asked her if there was any other reason behind it and Erika said that she likes him. Kuya remembered his dream and told her that she doesn't like him truly. It was just because they're role-playing that she feels like she likes him. Erika felt silent for some time and told him that he was right. Besides, she really didn't want to fall for him so it was for the better. She handed him the peers and left, leaving him standing on the door. Erika kept thinking of what Kuya had said to her. She felt bad that she had mustered up courage to confess her feelings but Kuya didn't regard it at all and declared it to be a misunderstanding. She met the girl from before who was in Kuya's house on the road. She asked her if Kuya also kicked her out. Turns out she had come to pick something up from his house and he had strictly told no to her advances. She said that Kuya was done playing with girls now that he had a dog. She ran back to Kuya's house and asked if it was true. He said it was a hassle that the girl had said this to her. But it was true. Erica said that her feelings were a mistake. She was pissed off before by his antics that's why she thought of giving up on her feelings. But she wouldn't give up until he believes her words so she'll keep on trying and telling him that she likes him. Kubia laughed and said she doesn't have to be persistent as he believes her. Erika asked now that he believes her what his answer is to her confession. She asked whether he likes her or not. Kubia said that he didn't know. She was shocked after hearing his words. She exclaimed about how was that supposed to be an answer. He said that it would be fun to watch her in despair and hanging on to every word he would say for the upcoming days. She was shocked again after hearing his sadistic wish to see her in constant agony. She was in total despair over his behavior. Santa asked why did she still liked him after that, but Erica herself wanted to know the answer to that. But she was determined in making him fall for her. She didn't want to give up so easily, so she had to find a way. She thought about finding a weakness of him. Santa was in the same class as him, so she asked for her help, but Santa didn't talk to Kuya, so she couldn't help her. Now Erica was in a deep thought of how to find something on Kuya. On their way back home, she got hit by a ball. Turns out the person who hit her was Kuya's friend Tegaru. He apologized for hitting her and told her to complain to him if Kuya pestered her in any way. Kuya said that she wasn't his girlfriend but Tegaru did not believe him. Tegaru was Kuya's friend from middle school. Erika thought that he could be the one that can help her. She told about her situation to Tegaru who went to beat Kuya up for playing sadistic game with Erika. She stopped him and said she liked how he was sadistic and she wanted him to like her just the way she was too. Tegaru cried after seeing her determination and promised to help her. He showed her picture of girls and asked his preference. Kuvia randomly selected a girl and answered the questions Tekuru asked him. Next day, Erika dressed up like the girl who Kuvia had chosen and started doing things that he liked according to Tekuru's information but none of that worked because Kuvia looked at her with plain disdain. She told Tekuru about their failed plans. Tekuru told her not to be sad as he still had an ace up his sleeves. He called Kuvia and Erika to his school festival. He showed them the haunted house. He told Erika to play fragile as a man fall in love with a woman when his protectiveness for the woman is at peak. She did not need to act scared as she actually was scared of the haunted house. Kuvia told her that he would give her a hand which made Erika happy. But Kuvia actually handed her a skeleton hand which grandly failed their master plan. Erika was sad and lost all hope. Takeru told her not to lose hope as it would be over if she gives up. She also said that she wouldn't give up but couldn't help her tears from coming when she said that. Takeru consoled her and said he would help her until the last moment. At night, Takeru messaged Erika and told her to come and meet him. Erika reached the destination and saw Kuya standing there. Takeru also messaged Kuya saying he needed to say something to him. Takeru came and said to Kuya that he had fallen for Erika. 
She was hurting from trying every time to win over his love. He didn't like seeing Erika in such pain as he liked her, so he asked Kyuya if he was fine with him taking Erika. Kyuya told him to do what he want. Erika's feelings were hurt after hearing that it didn't matter to him if any other person took her. She ran away from there in tears. Takeru held Kyuya's collars and told him that he was the one making her cry. Kyuya said sorry as he did not say what Takeru wanted him to say. He said that he knew all about Takeru's plan to make him confess on impulse. But he would be the one to decide when he would fall for Erika. Erika was standing near a bridge when Kyuya came to took her home. She asked him to go since he didn't care for her at all. Kyuya asked her to wrench open his heart and make him fall in love with her. He pushed his hands towards her. Erika couldn't believe how self-centered he was but she would love the hell out him to show that her love for him is indeed strong. She took his hands with tears in her eyes and went home together. Erika kept thinking about the other day and what Kyuya had told her. Her friends were discussing Christmas plans with each other. They had made plans with their boyfriends for Christmas. She also wanted to celebrate Christmas with Kyuya. Her friends asked about her plans with Kyuya but she didn't have one so she lied that they would have pancakes and exchange gifts with each other. Her friends made plans to exchange their date pictures. They told Erika to send pictures with Kyuya too. She agreed out of pressure but didn't know how to approach Kyuya. She met Sana in the bathroom to ask what to do to get out of the mess she had created once again. Sana told her to normally approach him and ask him out like a normal person. Erika saw Kyuya waiting outside her class and became determined to ask him out for Christmas. She casually asked him about Christmas and her worst luck. Kyuya absolutely hated Christmas. After hearing his awful opinion about Christmas, she couldn't muster up courage to ask him out. She just told him about the promise she had made to her friends to send them a date picture of both. He said that women are a pain but agreed to the picture. On their way, a saleswoman asked him to buy a ring for his girlfriend to which he rudely declined. He hinted the ritual of giving gifts in Christmas. Erika said that it was to make beautiful memories with their loved ones people exchange gifts. He said if she likes presents then he would buy one for her. She got excited and asked what he would buy for her. He jokingly said that he would buy a collar with a leash for her to take walks every day. She got excited about that which baffled Huya, who was trying to pull her leg. She said that whatever she gets from the person she loves, she would treasure it forever. They went to the Christmas tree and took a picture together. Seeing the picture, Erika felt like a real couple with Kyuya. But after a while, she let down her excitement as she didn't know if it will work out with Kyuya the way she wanted to. She felt a sudden pain on her stomach. Kyuya took her to a cafe and bought medicines for her. He asked what she was thinking about so deeply to even develop a stomach ache. She said it was his fault. She asked him if she was only a toy dog for him to pass his time and make fun of. He said he didn't know, but Erika threatened him to splash with water if he gives a vague answer. He said he liked her. He couldn't say anything before because he was shy, but he likes her truly. He apologized for making her wait so much. Erika was so happy that she cried out of relief. She finally asked him to spend the Christmas with her. He agreed and asked what she wanted to do. She said that she just wanted to do the usual stuff like eat together and exchange gifts. After getting her hopes high, Kyuya bursted the sadistic bomb by saying he was just putting in a show all this time. He ridiculed her for being so gullible since he would never say such sweet words. Erika threw the water in his face and told him to die. She left the cafe in tears and locked herself in her room for the whole Christmas. She saw the pictures sent by her friends but didn't want to send her picture since it didn't matter anymore. But she couldn't stop loving him for his rarely done sadistic kind acts. Her mother knocked on her door and she opened the door. She saw that Kyuya was standing in front of her. Kyuya said that he waited the whole day for her to apologize to her master for throwing water at him. He tied a necklace in her neck and said it was a collar that says she belonged to him. He said he couldn't buy a real collar as it would reveal his sadistic tendencies. Erika was so happy by his misogynistic mindset that she cried. They clicked pictures together and sent it to her friends. Erika had a nice Christmas for a girl who had pretty low standards. Christmas went by along with the winter vacation. Even though the plans after Christmas is usually going to snowboarding and going to the shrine together, but unfortunately in Erika's case they did none of that. Kyuya didn't even bother to contact her for all these days. The school opened and Erika excitedly went to Kyuya to wish him a new year. She asked him why he did not answer her call but Kyuya said that he was bothered by spams. Kyuya was surprised as to why Erika didn't seem low by that but she said now that she has the necklace given by him, she would not get sad over small things like that. He replied saying he could discard her any moment making the necklace useless. This dampened Erika's spirit a bit but she was determined to make the upgrade from a dog to his girlfriend and was sure of her destination. In class, Erika and her friends were discussing about Valentine's Day and Erika had decided to make handmade chocolate for Kyuya. A guy from their class was trying to talk to them but they didn't see him at all. The guy was about to leave when Erika saw him and called him by his name Kuzakab. 
Erica told him that they would bring their notebooks later and told him not to worry. Erica was excited about her Valentine's Day plan but took her unfortunate luck. Huya also hated sweet things like chocolate and he felt Valentine's Day was a hassle. He saw the chocolate book in her bag and told her that if she could make something he could eat then he would accept her gift. Erica got happy after hearing this and asked him to get ready to be blown away by her skills. She went to the grocery store to buy things for making chocolates when she saw Kusakabe. He had forgot to bring his wallet so Erika came forward and paid for his groceries. He apologized for causing problems and kept saying sorry for no reason. She told him to calm down as it was normal for her to help him. He shared that his face is a bit girly, and he is skinny making him look weird to people and he thinks that people are uncomfortable around him. Erika told him to be confident and stop feeling that people are uncomfortable around him. If he takes action then people would also acknowledge him. They said each other goodbye from there and Erika worked hard at home to make cupcakes for Kyuya. Next day, Kusakeb came and said hi to her. He told that her advice had worked and he could say good morning to people who replied back to him. Erica was happy for him and told him if he moved his bangs from his face then he would look much nicer. Kyuya saw this and hugged Erica from behind as if to mark his territory. Kusakeb felt his intentions and went away from there. Erica said Kyuya to wait for her at lunch because she needed to give him chocolates. He said okay and left. At lunch, Erica was on her way to meet Kyuya when she saw Kusakeb sitting on the bench with a sad face. She asked him what was wrong. He said he just felt melancholy during Valentine's Day because his mother and sister gets too concerned about him. Erica thought of giving him an obligatory chocolate and did give him one cupcake. Kusakeb took it with hesitation and became happy to receive a cupcake from her. Kyuve saw Kusakeb with a cupcake in his hand and saw the same cupcake in Erica's hand which she gave to him. He threw away the cupcake and said he didn't want the nasty cupcake. He was annoyed because she gave Kusakeb the same cupcake she had made for him. He said that Kusakebi was a guy who couldn't take action on his own and being on the same level with such a pathetic guy pissed him. He was angry that she treated both of them at the same level. This angered Erika, and she retaliated saying Kusakebi was a nice and kind guy who in respect, was on a higher level than him. Kyuya told her to make Kusakebi his fake boyfriend and left. Whole day, Erika was worried as to what went wrong with her plans. She was about to fall from the stairs but Kusakebi saved her. He asked if she was worried about anything and told her to share her problems with him. Erika said that he was very cool unlike what he thinks. On the other hand, Hikaru told Kyuya that he was being rude and someday another guy is going to snatch Erika away from his hands if he keeps up with his acts. Erika and Kusakebi sat in a cafe where she told her about her worries and problems. He asked her why she still liked Kyuya despite his behavior to which Erika also had no answer to. Kusakebi mustered up his courage. He told her to think about him as a dating prospect and told her to take her time to think. Erika was at her home thinking about Kusakebi's proposal. Next day, Kyuya saw Kusakev and Kusakev asked to speak with him for a moment. He asked Kyuya why he kept hurting Erika. He replied that he didn't bother to hurt her and only lives honestly. Kusakev said to Kyuya that he had expressed his feelings to Erika. This made no difference to Kyuya as he said they can do whatever they wanted to and that they would make a pure lovey-dovey couple. Kusakev asked him if he did not love Erika at all. He replied that Erika was just a way to pass time for him and left. Unbeknownst to them that she had heard all of their conversations standing below the staircase. After their conversation ended, Kusakebi saw Erika standing below the staircase. He asked if she was fine. She told him that she was fine and had made a decision. She met Kyuya the very day after classes ended and told him that he doesn't need to pretend to be her boyfriend anymore as she wanted to get out of her wolf girl era. She was exhausted and had been too persistent with him. So now he was free and she would not pester him anymore. Kyuya told her that they were complete stranger from now on. Erika agreed and said goodbye to him. Next day, Erika went to have lunch with Kuzakabe. Apparently, they were not dating, but they were starting as friends first. Kyuya saw them together from his class window and got irritated by another girl trying to approach him. He got up from his sit and went away while Erika watched him. Kusakab asked if she was okay. She said she was just looking at the school windows. He asked her out to go to an arcade near the station. She agreed but asked if she could bring Santa also as more people would make more fun at the arcade. Kusakev didn't have a problem, and they all went to the arcade. After playing for a while, Kusakev asked Erika to go out with him on White Day with just the two of them alone. Erika said yes, and the arcade trip ended. Santa asked Erika if she was truly alright and forgotten about Kyuya. She said she now felt as free as a bird that got free from its cage. She was under the pressure of maintaining a lie all this time that she couldn't do anything. Now she can pursue a new romance with Kusakev as he was really nice and not rude like Kyuya. Sen asked if she had given any answer to Kusakab. Erika said she wanted to think some more and Kusakebi would also wait. Sana said that anticipating someone's answer is always painful as she had also gone through the same pain. She told her to take a decision as soon as possible. 
Erika kept the thought in her mind. Next day, Kusakebe was showing her the places he had selected for their white day trip. Erika told him to choose whatever place he found best for their date. They agreed upon the aquarium. While walking and discussing about their outing, Erika saw Kiwia and a girl standing together. The girl was confessing to him and Erika get distracted and fell. After hearing her name from Kusakebe's mouth, Kiwia also saw her. Kusakebe took her to the infirmary and went back to call for a nurse. Kiwia entered the infirmary and went to take some medicines, he asked her if they were dating. Erika said it was none of his business but Kiwia kept persisting her to answer his questions. He asked if she loved him. She said that it doesn't matter to him and even though she doesn't love him, she wanted to love him and told him to remain as a stranger just like he wanted. Kusakebe came to the room and Kiwia left, it was white day. Erika and Kusakebe enjoyed their day at the aquarium. While they were on their way to eat, Takeru saw them together. He called Kiwia and told him everything. Kiwia hung up after hearing from Takeru. Erika and Kusakebe were at the end of their date and she kept thinking about how if she fell for Kusakebe, she won't get hurt, but at the end she couldn't love him. She told Kusakebe that she can't accept his proposal. She had told to herself that she wouldn't live like Wolf Girl anymore, but she was lying to herself all this time saying she did not love Kiwia. She was still obstinately in love with him. Kusakebe said that she should move her eyes from him and try to forget about him if she didn't want to love him, but Erika knew that she wanted to keep loving Kiwia. Kusakebe said that he was happy for her to finally realize her true feelings. He said her thanks to help him see and love many things about him. He was glad to fall for her. Erika cried after seeing his good-heartedness and promised to work hard in order to make Kiwia fall in love with her. Kusakebe told her that she did not have to go far as Kiwia was standing behind them. He held Erika's hands and told Kusakebe that he was taking her. Kusakebe told him to treasure her this time they went away. Erika kept asking him why he was taking her if he didn't love or care for her. Kiwia said her as his answer but she was not satisfied because she wanted him to say it. She told him to say it to her as she had suffered a lot. Kiwia said that it must be love as people call it and Erika him back. They went back to their usual banter except this time they were actual girlfriend and boyfriend. Winter went by quickly with all of the belated confession and now it was the time of spring vacation. Erika and Kiwia were going through their first date ordeal. Kiwia didn't want to go flower viewing as he hated crowded place but Erika wanted to do it. Kiwia wanted to rent a DVD and watch it at home. Dot, so they decided through a game of rock, paper, or scissors where Erika won and now they were at the park. A group of girls and a guy went by them and they talked how Kiwia was very hot in comparison to Erika, who was playing Jing in their eyes. Erika wanted to do couple stuff like tail photos together, hold hands and feed each other but Kiwia did not want to do any of if them. Erika asked him to go on a boat ride together, but Kiwia also didn't want to do that. They got into an argument over it. Eruka said to him that he always said no to everything and they couldn't even do a single thing together. Kuvia in retaliation said that Erika had made everything obligatory for them, even though it was not. Erika said back that it was not obligatory, rather every couple did that. He told Erika that she only wanted to play date and she will be happy by doing these things with anyone else if not him. Erika felt hurt hearing that and went to ride alone. She messaged him saying that if eating together would be fine with him. He agreed and they sat on a bench together to eat. She said that next time they could watch the DVD he wanted to as she would enjoy everything they do together. Kiwia also apologized for his behavior earlier and opened his mouth for her to feed him. With great embarrassment on both of their part, they ended their date in a somewhat sweet note. Finally, the spring vacation ended and it was the time for second year. This time Erika had gotten into the same class as Kiwia and Santa which made her super happy. They were in their class when they saw a charming boy standing outside their class asking every girl's name before letting them enter. It was the same guy from the park named Nozomi, who was quite popular with girls. He saw Kiwia the prince of the school and let him enter. He asked everybody's name including Erika. In class, Nozomi and Erika sat together and he kept trying to get her number. The teacher saw them talking and out both of them in committee duty. They stayed back after class to work. Nozomi asked Erika on a date after sneaking out from school. At that moment, he got a call from a girl to whom he said, I love you. Erica told him not to ask other girls on a date when he already has a girlfriend. He said he didn't have a girlfriend because he doesn't believe in it. He rather has many girls on his side. Erica said him not to play with girls as some girls can get serious feelings for him. He asked if Erica also felt like that towards Kuya. She answered that she indeed felt like that towards Kuya, but now everything was fine. Nozomi got surprised after knowing that Kuya was dating her. They finished their work and were on their way back. Erika saw Kiwia was waiting for her. She had forgotten her keys and went back to get them back, leaving Kiwia and Nozomi alone. Nozomi asked him why he was dating an average girl like Erika when he can get so many girls at a time. He didn't bother to answer. But when Nozomi made a comment about Erika being great in bed, 
Kyuya warned him to keep his mouth shut and left with Erika. Nozomi laughed at his behavior and was determined to open his eyes. The orienteering activity had started with a school trip. Nozomi was hell-bent on making Kyuya realize the true benefits of leading a life like him. He sat beside Kyuya in the bus and tried to show him different girls on his phone. He told him that all these girls make lunch for him every day so he doesn't have to worry about making his own. He kept telling him the benefits of having many girls but Kyuya didn't care about his talks and told him to shut up. Erika was sad as she didn't get to sit with Kyuya but was also curious about his conversation with Nozomi. Her friends jokingly said that maybe Nozomi is trying to steal Kyuya from her considering that he is a veteran and charming people. Erika got worried for a moment but it didn't last long. After reaching their destination, Erika asked Nozomi what he was talking about with Kyuya. Nozomi said that he was just trying to open his heart and become his friend. Erika got happy hearing this. She told him that he might act twisted but Kyuya is a good guy. She supported him in his quest of making him his friends and wished him luck. But Nozomi had a completely different goal in his mind. He introduced Kyuya to a group of girls he was with before and a girl asked for Kyuya's number. Kyuya replied that he didn't use a phone and left. Nozomi chased after him and asked why he lied. Kyuya just said that it was pain. Nozomi didn't back up and said why he was lowering his standards by being with Erika when he can have different girls. But Kyuya wasn't interested in that and asks him to look for someone who is truly like him in character and leave him alone. Erika was missing Kyuya and her friends told her to go to his room. Santa told him not to do so as she would surely get into some trouble. After her friends were gone, Santa asked Erika why did she want Nozomi to be Kyuya's friend. She said that when she came into this school, she was lonely in class until she met Marin and Tezuka. She saw Kyuya also didn't have friends. She simply didn't want him to feel lonely like her and wanted Nozomi to truly be his friend. On the other hand, Nozomi had brought the same group of girls in their room and forced Kyuya into their game even after his total refusal. They started playing a game of ring chains and Nozomi told Kyuya and the girl from before to kiss. But Kyuya refused to play anymore and left. Nozomi went after him and told him why he was being like that when he could just follow his instincts. Kyuya said that he was living by his own wills and that included his instincts being different from him. Nozomi showed off the numbers of girls he had but Kyuya said that the more trash he would pick the more trash he would get and left him with this sudden realization. Nozomi got rejected by a girl and while deleting her number, he felt numb. The trip had ended and it was time to go back. Kyuya sat next to Erika, this time which made her happy. Nozomi stopped Kyuya and said that he was right. He didn't care for anything till now, but he feels that having one special girl is more than enough. Kyuya said that he will get one because he himself was like Nozomi once. He felt good after hearing this. He left the bus leaving a happily blushing Erika and Kyuya together. After Nozomi changed his way, he kept clinging to Kyuya so much that even Erika got jealous of him. She told him to give her some time to flirt with Kyuya too. Kyuya was pissed with both of them and told them to go away. But Erika was on cloud nines as her birthday was nearing and she was excited over spending her birthday with Kyuya. She told him that her birthday was on 23rd June. She wanted to spend the whole day with Kyuya, eating and roaming different places with him. He asked what she wanted for her birthday. She said that she wanted love. He was annoyed after hearing her answer. He asked her where in the heaven he could even buy love, but before he could get an answer, Erika went away for her class. Kyuya was in a twist as to what to do for her birthday. It would have been easy for him if she had just asked for a designer handbag. Takaru and Nozomi had met and already became friends. They were at Kyuya's house to help him out. They gave him ideas for what to do for Erika's birthday. But Kyuya didn't like sweet-talking woman. All of these things didn't come easily to him. Takaru asked him if he ever felt happy after seeing Erika happy, if his heart ever melted after seeing her. Kyuya couldn't answer that question. They told him just to shower her with genuine feelings, which was even harder for him. Next day, Erika was talking to Sanan about her demand for love from Kyuya. She said that she only wanted him to say I love you to her directly. She had her hopes low as Kyuya wasn't the type of guy to say such things, and she would be happy as long as Kyuya does something for her. Kyuya heard their conversation. He tried to practice saying I love you to the mirror, but it grandly failed after he punched the mirror. It was the day of Erika's birthday. She had cut her hair hoping that Kyuya would notice. He saw her hair and gave a vague compliment on it. In the restaurant, Kyuya gave his gift to Erika, which was a bracelet. She became very happy to have the gift chosen by him. He tried to say I love you to her but couldn't do it and went out to get some fresh air. Meanwhile, Takaru and Nozomi were sending good wishes to him which ended up making him ever more nauseous. They went to the movies next and Kyuya chose a romantic movie to watch much to Erika's disbelief. He was even more disturbed after watching the movie which coincidentally had a male lead who couldn't muster up his courage to say I love you to the heroine. Kyuya felt pressure building up in him but at the end he still couldn't say it to her. They went to different places after that and lastly they went on a boat tour. 
Seeing Erica happy, QEF felt something inside of him. He tried to say I love you to her again, but it came out as I love your hairdo. The day came to an end like that. Just when QEF was about to go, Erica stopped him and said she was very happy today. It was the first time her birthday had felt so special. She said I love you to him and thanked him for the day. Kiwia hugged Erica and muttered those three words that Erica wanted to hear for so long. She hugged him back and said I love you to him. Erica was happy with the gift she had gotten from Kiwia and kept showing it as Santa. Nozomi jokingly said if she lost it, Kiwia would make her go to the ends of the world to search for it. Even though he was joking, Erica got genuinely concerned as Kiwia could very well be that much sadistic. She promised Kiwia that she would search for it even if she has to go to the depths of hell, which made no sense to him at all. They discussed about their summer vacation plannings. Erica said that she had no plans with her family. She asked Kiwiat if he would go to visit his mother in Kobe. He said that he would not go there and does not wish to go there either. Erica thought that she had stepped on a mine, but Kiwiat said that he didn't have any trauma or hold any grudges for his parents. He just didn't like to deal with people regardless family. They saw a beautiful woman cruelly rejecting Guy and Kiwiat had a deer in headlights look on his face after seeing her. It turns out that the woman was his older sister Rika who lives with her mother. She had come to visit them for summer. Erica was very nervous in front of her and introduced herself as Kiwi's girlfriend. After getting introduced to everyone, Rika threatened Kiwi to grab her luggage, and he begrudgingly followed her. It became clear to Erica that Kiwi's sister was just like him if not craftier. After getting home, Rika told Kiwi to break up with Erica if he was just merely messing around and having fun with her. Kiwi told her not to interfere in their relationship. He said that it was not a whim of his which interested Rika as she knew her brother was someone who didn't believe in romance or love. She was intrigued by it and called Erica to meet with her. They went around a lot of dessert shops to eat. She asked Erica if Kiwia was even a proper boyfriend because he was a playboy before. Erica said that even if he was rough in the beginning but now he does many things for her including giving her gifts and saying I love you. Rika didn't believe her and said that Kiwia was not capable of loving. This made Erica angry and she defended him saying that Kiwia was indeed a nice guy who was capable of loving someone. Rika challenged her to a duel. She called Kiwia and told him to come to a hotel quickly. He declined at first, but when she said that Erica was in a bad shape, he hung up the phone and reached to the hotel. He had a grim look on his face when he talked with Rika, which gave Rika the impression that he was genuinely concerned about Erica. Turns out that Rika had challenged Erica to an eating competition, which pushed her to reach her limit, making her vomit. After everything was sorted, Rika invited her to visit to Kobe. Finally, Erica was having a summer trip with Kiwia and his family. She was nervous to meet his mother and was shocked to see a burly woman waving at them. Erica had thought the burly woman was their mom, but it just turned out to be an acquaintance of Rika's. Kiwia's mother was a soft-looking middle-aged woman. She welcomed them and asked Kiwia how he was. Kiwia replied he was normal. His mother was satisfied just hearing him speak dot at night. While their mother, Rika and Erica were sitting together, Kiwia just left after having his dinner. Their mother was very happy to see Kiwia after a long time so she had drink a little more than usual. Rika apologized from her behalf saying she was just excited to see him. Even if Kiwia says he is alright, he still has deep wound from his childhood because of their parents' divorce. Their mother still blames herself for leaving Kiwia alone and for making him lose faith in love, but it was fine now that Erika has entered his life. Erika thought that even though he might have come here but he still hasn't got over things with his mother. Next day, Erika and Rika donned a yukata and were leaving for the summer festival. They asked Kiwi to come, but he declined. But after seeing Erika, he decided to go with them. Rika told Erika how Kiwi used to play games with her mom when he was little. Erika wanted him to play his childhood games again, but Kiwi refused to play. He told her not to barge in his business with his mother. Erika went away from there saying that she was going to the bathroom. Dot in reality, she was far more adjusted to his rude behavior and had a plan in mind. She called his mom and told her to come at the festival as Kiwia and Rika were fighting. After ending her phone call, she saw that her locket was lost and she saw a pile of garbage in front of her. She started searching for her locket in the garbage while Rika and Kiwia were searching for her. Their mother also reached the festival and searched for Erika together with them. They finally found Erika in the garbage searching frantically for her locket. Rika told her to come out as it was just a piece of jewelry but to Erika it was far more precious than a simple jewelry. Kiwia also got down to help her and with their mother's help, they found the locket. At home, Kiwia said thanks to his mom for helping them and told her that he would visit her more often from now on, making her happy. Erica got a picture of Kiwia from his childhood where he had a snowman which was ruined by his sister. Kiwia remembered that the snowman was not ruined on its own and felt a relief in his heart. Kiwia and Erica's relationship went on with their usual pace of love, happiness, and sadistic tendencies of Kiwia.